Steve here again from Photoshop Essentials. Photoshop's oil paint filter can turn any photo into what looks like an oil painted masterpiece. And in my opinion, it's one of the most impressive filters that Photoshop offers. It's also one of the easiest filters to use, as I'll show you in this video. I'll even show you how to use two oil paint filters on the same image with different settings for different areas and how to combine them using a layer mask into the final result. I'm using Photoshop 2023 and I'll use this image from Adobe Stock. And in the layers panel, we see the image on the background layer. Now, before applying the oil paint filter, we should start by converting the image into a smart object. And that way we can apply the filter as a smart filter which will let us go back and change the settings if we need to. So just right click on an empty gray part of the layer and choose convert to smart object. And a smart object icon appears in the lower right of the thumbnail. Then go up to the filter menu, choose stylize and then oil paint. And this opens the oil paint filters dialog box. And already we can see the initial oil paint effect. If you're not seeing the effect, make sure the preview option is turned on. Then click on part of the image to center it in the preview window. The preview window lets you inspect an area at the 100% zoom level, no matter what zoom level the rest of the image is set to. And you can click and drag inside the preview window to scroll around to different areas. So the oil paint filter is very simple to use. The first four sliders at the top control the brush and the options at the bottom let you adjust the lighting. Let's start with the brush. But one thing to note is that each of these options has an impact on the others and they all work together to create the final result. So the result you get from dragging one slider will depend on your settings for the others. And we'll see examples of this as we go along. So the stylization slider at the top controls the length of the brush strokes. If you drag it to the left, you'll get shorter strokes and dragging to the right gives you longer, more fluid strokes. And the cleanliness slider below it controls the smoothness of the strokes. Dragging to the left gives the painting a grittier look with lots of texture and detail. And dragging to the right gives it a smoother and cleaner look. Now I mentioned that all of these sliders work together to create the overall oil painting effect. And that is especially true with these first two sliders, stylization and cleanliness. I'll drag both of them all the way to the right to their maximum values. And this gives the painting the longest strokes and the smoothest strokes possible. But if I lower the cleanliness amount, Notice how the strokes tend to look shorter, even though the stylization slider, which controls the length of the strokes, is still at its maximum value. If I drag cleanliness back to the right, but then I lower the stylization, the painting looks very detailed and textured, even with cleanliness, which controls the smoothness, at its highest setting. And if I combine that with a lower cleanliness value, the texture and detail are brought out even more. So it does take some experimenting with the sliders to get the look you want to achieve. Before we continue on with the next slider, let's quickly look at a problem you'll often run into when trying to find the best settings for your image. I'll set stylization to seven and cleanliness to eight because I really like this smooth wispy effect especially in his hair and beard. But I don't like how those settings affect his eyes, which are looking too smudged and distorted. I'm going to ignore the problem with his eyes and just focus on finding the best settings for the overall image. And then once we have the main effect, I'll show you how to apply a second oil paint filter using different settings and then combine the two filters together into the final result. So let's continue on with the sliders. The scale slider controls the thickness of the brush strokes. If you drag it to the right, you'll get a much wider brush and dragging to the left, 
gives you a smaller brush. Larger scale values can work better with higher resolution images. But all of these sliders will give you different results depending on the size of your image. So if I was working with a smaller image, I would need to dial back the settings to get a similar effect. And finally, the bristle detail slider either sharpens or softens the brush strokes depending on which way you drag it. Lower values give you a softer image and higher values will sharpen the details but the result is fairly subtle even at higher settings. I'll lower it back down to around three. Once you have your main oil painting effect using the brush sliders, you can use the lighting options to control the direction and intensity of the light that's shining on the painting. The angle value sets the direction of the light and you can change it by dragging inside the dial or you can click and drag on the word angle to adjust it using the scrubby slider. And shine controls the intensity of the light. Higher values really bring out the contrast in the strokes, but are usually too intense. Lower values are more subtle and tend to work better. You can even uncheck the lighting option to turn it off completely, which often looks great because the result is very clean but leaving it on makes the brush strokes easier to see. To compare the effect with the original image, just toggle the preview option on and off using the checkbox. You can also toggle it by pressing the letter P on your keyboard. Other than his eyes looking too smudged, I like the overall effect. So I'll come back and fix his eyes in a moment. But for now, I'll accept it by clicking OK to close the dialog box. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the oil paint filter listed as a smart filter below the image, which is great because it means that we can reopen the filter to change the settings. But how do we change the settings in just one part of the image? In my case, how can I bring back detail in his eyes without affecting anything else? Well, the trick is to apply a second oil paint filter with different settings and then combine the effects from both filters using a layer mask. And here's how to do it. First, I'll make a copy of my smart object by dragging it down onto the new layer icon. And this gives me a copy of the image and a copy of the oil paint smart filter. Then I'll open the new oil paint filter by double clicking on its name. And this reopens the dialog box with the same settings I used last time. I'll click on his eye to center it in the preview window. And then to bring back the detail in his eyes, I'll lower the stylization value, which makes the brush strokes shorter. And that looks great. I now have lots of detail in his eyes. Problem is, I also have lots of detail everywhere else, which is not what I wanted. But for now, I'll click OK to accept it. Next, I need to hide the effect of the second oil paint filter. So I'll make sure I have the top layer selected, and then I'll add a layer mask by going up to the Layer menu, choosing Layer Mask, and then Hide All. And this adds a layer mask filled with black, which hides the layer from view. Then I'll select the Brush tool from the toolbar. I'll press the letter D on my keyboard to set the foreground color, which is also the brush color, to white. And then I'll right click to open the brush options. I'll make sure the hardness is set to zero so I'm painting with a soft edge brush. And then I'll adjust the brush size so it's just a bit larger than his eyes. Then I'll press Enter or Return on a Mac to close the brush options and I can simply paint with white over his eyes to show the effect of the second oil paint filter in just those areas. And there we have it. That's how easy it is to turn a photo into an oil painted masterpiece using the oil paint filter in Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Photoshop tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.